Good afternoon, homesteaders. Welcome to our homestead. As you can probably see by the title and the thumbnail, you know what I'm doing today. Yes, that's right, bees. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you what I've learned so far, and I am going to set up my initial hives. It's gonna be a fun day. Let's get going. So first things first, what are the reasons that we are getting bees for our homestead? Well, everybody knows that they are the best pollinators out there. So for our gardens, for our greenhouse, for our orchards, all of our grown foodstuffs, we need bees and pollinators. So having our own bees is going to just help that process out on our homestead. Second reason, we get two great products from our bees, obviously honey, and the second one being beeswax. Now, you've seen our videos before. We use honey as uh, a medicine, and it obviously tastes great, so it can be used for a, a lot of different things. And the beeswax can be used to make candles. And the third reason is bees do not take up a lot of space at all. So if you have a very small homestead, you could incorporate bees onto your homestead and reap the benefits of them. For us on our property, we can fit a lot of bees. We're only starting with uh, six hives, and I'll talk about that in a minute, but it's a great benefit for a small homestead. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about the parts and pieces to the hive itself. I'm gonna talk about the ones that we purchased, the mistake I made when purchasing some of them, I'm gonna assemble one that's unassembled for you, and then we're gonna show you how we are gonna set them up out on the property, and there's some specific things to do when you're setting up your beehives. Thanks for joining me, B. That's actually her nickname. Thanks for joining me, B. Now it's time for homeschool. Okay, bye. Okay, so we purchased a kit to begin with, and we started buying these a few months ago, and as we had money, we would buy one more. Now, the reason we got six is because in Texas, on acreage more than seven acres, which our homestead is, you can get an apiary exemption, tax exemption, but you must have six hives. And so that's why we got six, but we couldn't afford to buy them all at one time. Each kit for us, well, sorry, this is the only kit, but each uh, box we bought was about $150. But what came with our kit was pretty nice. This is from an Amish company. This is made in the USA. Some we have are made in China. Um, it just depended on the price and the quality, actually. This one is okay quality, even though it's Amish made. So with the kit, we got a smoker, we got a hive tool, we got some gloves, we got the, the headgear, I'm not sure what it's called, it's not a hat, so the headgear, the screen headgear, and we got a jacket. And I had the privilege of talking with a friend of mine last night who has bees. How you doing, Matt? And he mentioned that you really don't even need the gloves and the gloves might be an impediment because they're a little bit clunky or some are. These seem to be a little bit tighter fitting on the hand, but if you harm a bee accidentally with big clunky gloves on, then you could get stung. And he uses his bare hands and he has never been stung. So we've got our roof or top cover here. We've got our inner top cover. Now there's a little slot here which must face up. So that is for a certain reason and I'm not 100% sure yet. So that must face up and then we have what's called a queen excluder screen here and that prevents the queen from going up into the top honey supers which sit on top of this bottom brood box. Now we've got some frames here in the brood box and this is a 10 frame. Now I've heard from a lot of people, including Matt, that the eight frames are better and the rest of mine are eight frames. So the mistake I made was not researching what number of frames is best. Uh, five frames is frowned upon actually because the bees can, um, they have too much space to build where they want to build instead of in the frames. These frames don't fit great. They kind of slip off the edge or a couple of them do and they slip down in. So. I'm not that impressed with the way this one is constructed, but no big deal, I'm just starting out. So each frame here has the hexagonal shaped uh, area where the comb is going to be built. And unfortunately, 
This one only came with five frames, so now I have to find five more frames for this one. So when you're buying yours, make sure that it comes with all of the frames. So now we've taken the brood box off and we have the bottom board. Now this has some screen in it right here for ventilation, and it's got this what's called the bottom slatted rack, but mine isn't slatted. The slatted is for the ventilation, but this solid piece is actually plastic that slides in, is there to monitor for mites. So it's really good, actually I've heard that you have a solid piece on the bottom so you can see and monitor your, your hive to see if any mites are dropping onto here and then you can treat them accordingly. And then right here, this little piece is called the entrance reducer. We've got a large entrance here for established hives and then we've got a small entrance here that you'll put right there uh, to let uh, the bees in and out for a new hive. Now I'm gonna show you how we put together the unassembled one and one difference between the two on how they're treated on the outside. And then we're gonna take all these hives out on the property and set them up. We're gonna talk about spacing, we're gonna talk about height, we're gonna talk about orientation to the sun, and a few other things. So this kit came with the bottom brood box, but it also came with a super that goes on the top. So there's, it's stacked too high. That's really nice. Now you can see that this one is shiny and that's because it is covered in beeswax. Now the other one you saw earlier, I need to paint to protect it from the elements. Now there is a lot of information out there about how you should finish the exterior of your beehives. Now I've seen a lot more of the beeswax covered hives out there and a big channel, MI Gardener, huge gardening channel, he has beeswax covered hives. Obviously, there's a lot that are painted too. They're painted white usually, but a lot are painted different colors now. Now, the reason they're painted different colors is to prevent something called drifting. And that's where bees from one hive accidentally go to the other hive, enter into it, and usually they're killed. But usually the bees don't drift that much if the hives are spaced properly apart. Now let's show you how we are putting this one together. Now, a difference I wanna show you in this kit is this bottom board does not have a dual layer, so there's no screen in the bottom for ventilation. Uh, positive or negative, I'm not sure yet, but this is just the way this one's shaped. So I will list all the kits that we bought in the description below, and this one came with all of the hardware and everything you need to put the entire thing together. I am gonna say you probably wanna use a screwdriver on these screws when assembling the boxes, because pine is not strong at all, and if you crack it, you're gonna have an issue. And you're gonna need a little ball-peen hammer to nail in these nails for building all of these frames. Be careful, these are quite soft pine. You can see all of these are pre-drilled for your screw holes, which is nice. Now you might need a rubber mallet to knock these into place because some of them don't fit perfectly and they are coated with that beeswax, so they're a little tight. Now that we have our initial brood box together, I am going to assemble some frames for you. Now we're gonna assemble a frame and you are gonna also need some wood glue to keep these things secure. The nails won't do it alone. So you're gonna need that wood glue. We've got this top bar, this bottom bar, these two end pieces, and we have got our foundation slat here that goes in these slots that are cut in. First thing we're gonna do is we are going to paint on some glue in this groove on the top of the end piece. Paint some glue in there like that, in that little notch. And then we're gonna put them down into our top bar. Obviously make sure your groove is facing in. We're gonna slide in our foundation. We're gonna paint again in the groove on the bottom of the end slat. Now make sure that foundation slat, that middle portion, gets in the grooves on your top and bottom bar. So with the supplied nails, we are gonna drive them down into the top of the top bar and through into the side slat. 
And then for the bottom, you'll go through the side of the end slat and into the bottom bar. These fit much nicer than the other kit. So just rinse and repeat. Continue to build all of your frames and then build your super box for the top and then all the frames for that. Then you're ready to go and set this one out. Well, there you go. That's how you set that one up. Now that they are both together, we're gonna show you how we set them up on our property. So we are out here on the north side of our property as far as I could get, and we've got a good tree break here on the north side, which is what you want to block those northerly winds. We've also got a lot of forest to the west of us, and that's gonna block those northwesterly winds. Over here toward the south, you can see nice open skies. So that's gonna give those bees some good sunshine. Uh, not too much, but some great sunshine on their hives, which is what you want. Always face them in the southerly direction. Now, of course, everything I'm learning, I'm reading. So if you have experience with something different, let me know. But that's what the majority of people agree is the best orientation for them. So when you're setting yours up, you're gonna put them on some concrete block and you want to have them at least, I think it's 16 to 18 inches off the ground because skunks will hang out at the entrance of your beehive and just snack on them all night long. They'll sit there and scratch and snack on them. But if a skunk has to reach up, his soft underbelly is exposed. So they'll sting him on his belly and he will leave them alone. Now I'm not so sure how it works with other creatures, but keeping them a decent distance up off the ground is just smart in the first place so nothing else gets in there. All right, let's get the first two set up. Now you can really see the difference between the two types of boxes. Obviously, I still need to paint this. And you can see that I placed a block on the top of these because we do have a lot of raccoons and that's gonna keep critters from knocking the top off or even the wind from blowing the top off and disturbing that hive. Now you can see I also have these placed a certain distance apart from one another. In all of my research, I found varying distances between hives all over the place. So some places said two feet between hives, some said three, some said five. I have opted to go with four feet in between them. I think that's a pretty good distance between them to uh, prevent drift like I was talking about earlier. And we're gonna see because like I said, I'm new at this and I'm learning, but I'm trying to get as much information ahead of time as I possibly can. As always, if you have any questions, leave them for me in the comment section below. Now go check out this playlist, which is our entire series about how we put our greenhouse together by ourselves. Have a great day. We'll talk to you next time. Bye.